Today I want to talk about a method of changing the weather that many people find more amusing or enthusing than an authoress when she has her resume already written up. <laughs> and to change the weather, it's been thought by those like the great Von Neiman that we never control the weather because although he was a pioneer in the evolution of behavior, quantum mechanics, helped build the atomic bomb and weather forecasting, among other things, he thought that weather control would never be possible because he hadn't discovered the jet stream until the 1960s after he died. So after the time of the jet stream, there are many people who now believe that weather control may be more probable or possible. One of the major problems with weather control is about the vastness of the systems needed. So first I want to talk about controlling weather by way of these changes of large-scale systems. It's true that using methods like Bill Gates' idea of using ice cream ships or cooling ships are being met with not really much enthusiasm to control the tropical storms by cooling the ocean. In World War II, they had two ships devoted wholly to ice cream. They won the battle for Zooms. And they had you know, 47 bottling plants for Coca-Cola in the Pacific. But as for um, all those CEOs of soft drink companies sitting up saying, I do not believe that caffeine is the most habit forming there is in the world. <laughs> this is going to be true. How do you, how do you puff on a, a diet fizz? No smoking food or drink. <laughs> shake well, shake all over. So, this idea that you could change the hurricane by ships, there are patents on a ship that go into the eye wall and send up a jet of cooling water to help to side steer the hurricane from the center. And I thought of other methods like using a fin from the center that's powered by nuclear power or whatever, you know, the submarine steady under all those waves to reach it so it can damage the ship. And there are those who believe we might take a laser from an airplane. And as the tropical storm is building up, this would jolt the lightning. There's a lot of lightning in the center of the eye, and that would you stabilize the eye wall so much that the whole storm just magically fizzles out. But experts like at NASA, they say this is not much probable because the hurricane is too huge. We might imagine if, if they were using cooling ships that they would actually have to be the center of the hurricane at any rate, at the very least, to balance at the center. You're, there's no way you're going to control the huge hurricane with a tiny, tiny, giant ship just from the outside edge. That would be what I could guess, of course, only a guess that calculations show that this method of changing the hurricane may not be much probable, as the experts say about Microsoft's method of helping to do this. There are actually barges that some of the big data giants are using. They're storing the data offshore, and this way nobody can find out what the data is. But we wonder if the data will leak off the ship anyway. <laughs> so if you imagine a helicopter, and instead of using Props would have a giant spoon and fork for blending up lots of big data. At any rate, for hurricanes, we may need a much cheaper method of generating a lot of change. It's been observed that hurricanes use different amounts of dust. That is to say, the amount of dust in the air is correlating with the number of tropical storms per year. So I had thought we might use something like dust or something to change the frequency of hurricanes, and so on and so forth. There are a lot of ideas like this. There's a method of taking airplanes by patent and sailing them in and around the eye wall. And the sonic boom is supposed to have the power of stabilizing the eye wall and the hurricane doesn't stay solvent. But those who know about this say that the sound is like yelling into a windstorm. You're not going to influence at all, you know? A way to mess up a bunch of fighter jets. So. All this tells us that we need a larger power source. So I think that, as I've said, we might use large inflatable lenses. This is the use of inflatable lenses. We could actually have one in orbit. And it would generate so much heat that we really could destabilize the eye wall as we wish, or have much more influence over it than we have otherwise. The reason being that because weather control needs huge changes, by using a really cheap way of generating a lot of heat, we could use a reflective mirror, inflatable mirror, inflatable lens. And by doing this, we could theoretically change it enough that we could actually make a real change in it, enough to control it more as we wish.
Also about snowstorms. This would work for snowstorms, perhaps, because we could heat the air where it's about to snow and make it so that it doesn't have uh, snow. It just turns mostly to rain. And for tornadoes, it's possible we might have orbiting laser beam or airships up there that would send down a laser when the tornado starts to initiate. And that would make it so that it would destabilize it so much by heating that the tornado wouldn't form. In the west, they have the ridiculously resilient ridge, which is a, a dome of high pressure off the west coast of USA. And it stayed there for like years, causing a drought in California, they think. So to solve the ridiculous resilient ridge, I can imagine we would take a tube, and this tube takes the hot air, a large fan that pumps it right up there, pumps it way up high, all the way up above the 99% of the atmosphere, which is in five miles of the surface. And there at that point, it cools a lot because it's no longer with the air to heat it. And so it's in the outer space, and it's going to cool it. And then you, you pump the cool air back down another tube on the other side. And one thing we would say about this is the space tower was considered by Goddard and Solkowski. And these methods of the space tower were using light materials like carbon nanotubes. They're seriously considering it now because the first nation to build a tower to orbit would get hugely more money than other nations. It would build up the effect. They get more money to go to orbit. You get more money to build more tower, more money to go to orbit. The person up there is going to get really rich by helping the world have a lot more ways we can orbit cheaply and safely. It's not safe to go to orbit now. So I think that uh, it's possible we can take a tube, and that tube is powered by that hot air, and it goes up higher and higher. You're pumping up. It's held partially up by the tube, but also by uh, sort of flexors on the outside of the tube that stabilize it so it doesn't fall down. And the hot air rises. And so this might be a method of if we put a rail inside of it, I can imagine we use it at least for small payloads, and we might scale up to larger size payloads. I don't know if this part of changing the weather would work, but if it did, we could control the weather well, like the ridiculously resilient ridge, and we could also make it so that we could have a, a way to cheaply reach orbit. And we would build maybe a lot of them for that ridge, and we'd also use the tube if we put a lightweight, like plastic rail inside of it as a way to lift up our payloads to orbit. We could imagine using like cods on it so it's like a sort of cosmic zipper. Lightning would be an interesting form of weather control because each lightning bolt has about two kilotons of power. But we can't make use of that power because lightning is mostly about light and heat, which are both difficult to collect. I think it's possible we could use laser beams or particle beams and basically at the time the lightning storm starts, there are sensors that sense when the charge is building up, and instead of the lightning going back and forth in the ground, you send up the particle beam, as it's got a negative charge or a positive charge, and that beam intercepts the sort of artificial lightning to siphon off all that buildup of power before it starts, and then we collect a huge amount of energy, you sort of like gyroscopes, and then transfer elsewhere for storage. And this would also make it so lightning would cause such damage to the ground. Of course, lightning is not all bad. It causes ozone, and it also makes nitrogen. So we would have to have sort of subsidized method doing this. So for example, we could use sweeping particle beams, I suppose, on high mountains. It would go around and around and intercept that charge before it built up, like the lightning rod, except more glorified because you're getting a whole lot of power for doing it. And methods like these are using the laser beams or the particle beams from, from higher up to intercept the lightning when it would, before it would start. Maybe it's valuable to keep people from struck by lightning. There's more people who are struck by lightning that are killed by tornadoes and hurricanes each year. About the jet stream as I'd originally thought, as I say on my other video, I had believed that we could move the jet stream essentially where it balances, sort of the same kind of method as side steering hurricanes, where the center of the force is balanced, such as you make a change, kind of like power steering of your uh, Mazda. But instead, for the jet stream, you balance at the point where the north and south are, it's at the highest angle, going to north or to the south at an angle. This is where it would balance with like a rope, and you balance it where the wave is at zero force, in order to have to control the rope by modulating at that point in the resonance. So I had thought that we could use 
large inflatable like kites, they're like fins, and you take them from the ground and sell them up there and use them to deflect it mechanically, north or south as we'd like, or to shake it up so that the ridiculously resilient ridge doesn't build up in the west and shake it loose. It seems like the, the east coast has all this dust that's weighing down the jet stream. On the left coast, it's lifting up by heat. The, the heat is lifting up on the west, and the dust is like sticky, more industrious us. And that is causing it to stay stabilized and stuck. So I imagine if at least when it's starting to build up, we could shake it around a lot in the jet stream. We might be able to make it so that we could do never build up that kind of static sort of stability that we don't want to make it too cold in the east and too hot in the west. Another method, other than using those fins to, to control the balancing point of the jet stream, I think we might be able to use mirrors from the ground that are reflecting the solar light up to the jet stream, so it'd be easier to do than setting up the kites, which might be less stable. And the mirrors could move on trucks to where we want to send them, so that we can follow the jet stream in its yearly cycle of north or south in order to control it more as we wish. The idea here would be if we heat it a bit farther north as it's going north, it would go farther north yet from where it balances. I once thought of fans you put in your bed for air conditioning in the summer at the foot of your bed, just turn it off with your foot. And uh, fans are sort of like a powdered tropical storm, like a small powdered hurricane. And they have more power, but hurricanes actually do cool the tropics by 30 degrees. But electric fans actually outachieve air conditioning for cooling. They cool you down like three minutes, air conditioning takes like 20. A hurricane is like a heat bubble that rises up from the tropics and it cools at about 30 degrees. And think how much heat you'll save. This might totally change insurance being able to control the weather. According to insurance research, those who live it up the most are rich relatives.